What's up guys? Welcome back to Wakefield Wildlife. Tonight I've got another herping related photography tutorial for you guys. One of the most common questions I get is, how do you get your wide angle shots? People are always asking what lens I'm using, if I use flash in them, and other related questions. So I finally decided to just put it all together into a brief tutorial on the subject. Now this is definitely going to be brief, it's not going to be comprehensive but we'll hopefully answer a few of your questions and get you started on the path to getting great wide angle images. Now, wide angle images are some of my favorite images to capture. The way that they capture an animal in their habitat, if done correctly, can be absolutely breathtaking. But in my experience, they're also some of the hardest shots to pull off. So in this tutorial, I'm going to give you four tips on how to get the best wide angle images possible. Well, let's jump right in with tip number one. Get close. Yes, I know it's simple, but it can't be overemphasized. If you want to get breathtaking wide angle images of reptiles and amphibians, you often have to pee a mere inches away from the animal. Now, sometimes this simply isn't possible. Either you can't get close to the animal or it's a dangerous species and it's not safe to get that close. But if it's a harmless species and you can get that close, this is what we're talking about. All right, so here I have my camera, wide angle lens attached, and I also have one of my kids' toy elephants. You can see that the elephant, which is the subject, is really not that far away from the lens. Uh, there's maybe 15 inches or so in between the front of the lens and the elephant. But if you take a look at the back of the camera during this, you can see that the elephant still seems very, very far away. Um, and if we take an image here, the subject is going to be so small in the image that it's not going to be a very compelling image at all. So what you need to do is you need to bring that lens closer to the subject and when we do that you can see again looking at the back of the camera that this is going to be a much better image the subject fills much more of the frame and you're still going to get a whole bunch of really nice background included in your image now this is obviously dependent on the size of the animal as well you have to get a lot closer for a tiny frog than you would for a big lizard or a snake. And so you really just have to play it by ear. And when you're out in the field, depending on the size of the subject that you're trying to shoot, you have to adjust the distance from the subject depending on its size. But no matter what it is you're shooting, you really do have to get pretty close. Now the problem is not all wide angle lenses can get that close. Every lens has a minimum focus distance and it varies based on the lens. Some wide angle lenses have a minimum focus distance around 11 inches. Now that's simply not close enough for some species. If you are interested in doing these types of images, I recommend one of the following lenses. The Nikon 20mm f1.8 G, the Sigma 15mm f2.8 Fisheye, the Leowa 15mm f4 macro. Now this is an excellent lens, but keep in mind it's a manual focus lens only. So if you're comfortable doing manual focus only on a lens, then great, maybe that's the lens for you. But if you're not and you prefer autofocus, then I would recommend one of the other lenses. And both the Leowa and the Sigma lenses come in both Canon and Nikon mounts. And then there's the lens that I use that I have attached on the camera right now, and that is the Nikon 8 to 15 millimeter fisheye lens. Now the benefit of all of these wide angle lenses is that their minimum focus distance is super short. 
This means you can have the front of the lens mere inches from your subject and it's still in focus. And that's exactly the kind of lens that we need in order to get these close up wide angle images that we're talking about. Now before I move on to the next tip, I just want to give a necessary caution. Unless you've been trained to work with them, please don't try these techniques on venomous snakes or other dangerous wildlife. I have devised a method to keep me safe while photographing them, but there's still an element of risk even while using this. So please don't try this at home with venomous or other dangerous species. Now having said that, let's move on to tip number two, and that is mind the background. Now unlike with macro lenses, wide angle images typically have a lot of background in the image. And this is a good thing. The reason we take these images is to showcase the animal in its natural habitat. But it also means you need to think a little bit more about what direction you point the lens in. Is the background behind the animal looking nice? Are there man-made objects or buildings in the background? If there's someone helping you get the shot, are they in the frame? Here's a couple things to think about. First of all, if you can, make sure there's a little space behind the subject. If the subject is crammed right up against a tree trunk or a large boulder, it may defeat the purpose of shooting with a wide angle lens. However, if there's some space behind the subject, it creates a lot more depth in the image and may showcase the animal's habitat in a much more effective way. Now, secondly, now this isn't always possible, but look for leading lines in your frame that may naturally lead someone's eye to your subject. Now this could be as simple as a tree branch or a fallen log that transverses the image and leads right to the subject. Again, this may simply not be possible, but if it's there already, it can really take an image to the next level. Tip number three, use fill flash. When you're shooting wide angle images, you often have quite a bit of sky in the background of the image. Now the sky is usually quite a bit brighter than your subject, and if you expose for your subject, the sky is going to be overexposed and, and just blown out. So here's the solution. Set your camera exposure so that the sky will be properly exposed, and then use a bit of fill flash to light up your subject and fill in the shadows. Now I don't usually like to use a flash on camera, but in this case, because the subject is so close, I can angle the flash and diffuser down so that the fill flash is coming from above. This looks much more natural. Now I don't have a perfect formula to give you to get it right every single time. And it's going to be different depending on the time of day, the cloud cover, and whether the animal is in the shade or not. Just get out into the field, set the exposure so the sky isn't overexposed, and then experiment with adding a bit of fill flash until it looks just right. Just keep adjusting the uh, flash power up a bit or down a little bit and see what looks right, see what seems to blend in to the surroundings around it, and just keep practicing until it looks right. Now I go into a lot more detail about this subject in my video about flash photography for reptiles. Click up here to check it out. Or I'll also post it at the end of this video and in the description below. Tip number four, practice makes perfect. I can't emphasize this enough. Part of the process of getting better with this or any type of image is simply trial and error. Get into the field and just practice, practice, practice until you can do it in your sleep. Ask for honest feedback from your peers. Take criticism and use it to grow. Thanks so much for watching guys. I hope this brief tutorial helps give you some tools to get out there and start taking amazing wide angle images. If you've got any questions, leave them in the comments section below and I'd be happy to answer. See you guys next time.